and the show contains scenes of violence and coarse language. Your discretion is advised. I ain't a fucking chooch. One of Alfie's newfound friends, Axel, decided to come to town to disrespect me and the others. He even ended up threatening Alfie, and I just could not have that. <laughs> oh my god, I've been running for hours. I'm fucking exhausted. You don't have a spare bed around here, do you? Oh, like sir, a, I can, oh my god. Uh, I can take it. Yeah, sir. Nah. Put your hands up. Drop oh. that fucking gun right now. Drop it right now. We're gonna have a little talk. Give me one fucking good reason why I shouldn't shoot you right now after threatening my friend. Please, explain to me one fucking good reason why I should fucking kill you right now, Axel! <laughs> no, there's many reasons, but I'll go with the most logical. You shoot me, possibly the bullet will go through and hit your friend behind me. Let's put that. He's being a wise guy. That's what he's I'm doing. I'm not being a wise guy. Another reason being, uh, you hit me. One of you over there. It's not best for you. You're a wiser man than actually killing a person for words, I guess. As you have seen, you are still standing here alive, Axel. But I can't have you going around disrespecting my men or disrespecting our guests in our town. That is all I asked. But yet you go around and you treat us like uh, sort of like subtle shit, you know? You're just like sliding right in there, kind of saying, hey, I don't give a shit about you guys. You come in here, fucking blaze guns, eh? Like a fucking Rambo son of a bitch. And then after that, you fucking top it off with fucking threatening my friend. Disrespecting us is not gonna get you anywhere but a grave. You Who did I threaten? Number one, don't raise voice at all, boss. He's asking you questions, not vice versa. Axel, I just want you to understand that I can kill you, and I could kill every one of your reapers, just like that. It's simple. Very simple. I don't want to have to go to war with a bunch of fucking churches who think they're fucking death or something. I don't care what your fucking business is, but when you're in my town, Axel, I demand respect. Just like I would respect the town you live in. Is that so complicated, Axel? Do you understand me? Sure. Sure. This guy sounds sarcastic or something. Am I the only one hearing this? Don't be wise. A fucking gun and seven other people around me with guns. The only thing I want to do now is get my gun back and uh, head on out. Axel, you don't need to head on out. I just want us to be fucking clear. I'm making a message here. This is a chance to create mutual respect between you and I and my family. I'm not the guy who raises gun. We could have sat down and talked. Yeah, I'm sure your intentions were to talk. Like I'm gonna let you a chance to Get fucking him. shoot me. You don't have the same mentality as me. I didn't shoot you. Did you realize that? We didn't even fucking hit you. Nothing. You're just tied up. To prove a fucking point. Untie him. Face away from me. Away from me. I just see the cops come. Nobody judged you about anything. We didn't care about your business, Axel. We're not here to do fucking anything bad to anybody. Did we fucking stick a gun to your head before you disrespected us? No. But you went around disrespecting us and I ain't gonna fucking have that. You're gonna have two options now, Axel. You could either stick around and not be a goddamn chooch. Or you could go out there, get your fucking men. And we have this fucking war, and we start shooting each other. You might end up dead. I might end up dead. Nobody fucking wants that. Do you agree? Do you want to be dead? Is that what you want? Because you're still fucking alive. And I'm pretty sure if you wanted to be dead, you would have killed yourself a long time ago with all this shit going on. So I'm pretty sure that you want to be alive. Do we have an understanding? We do. Excellent. Somebody got a beer? Give this man a fucking beer. He looks parched as shit. Jesus Christ. He's giving back his weapons. Hey, right there. Take, take, take your weapon. See? You, you get everything back, okay? This is a fucking place of business. Hey, we don't need this kind of shit. Is that okay with you still? Eh? Don't worry about Good. After we let him go, Jack had some concerns he wanted to bring up. So here's the way I'm looking at it right now. Is that we just uh, we just pointed guns at cuffed 
completely, completely certain Maul's weapons. Uh, we give them good talking to. We call them a chooch. We did everything we were entitled to do. But then we give them back all of his weapons. We send them off without an escort. We say, yeah, have, have a good day. He has a, he has a long range rifle. And as far as I'm concerned, what we just did, he, he might just loop around and start shooting at us. If he's a smart man, he's not going to be doing that. I'm not questioning uh, your judgment, I'm just saying walk, uh, that if he was a smart man, he wouldn't have started bad-mouthing us in the first place. I understand your concern, Jack. Not everybody is smart. Some need to be taught. And sure, he may attack, maybe not. I'm just trying to make sure we get the respect we deserve in here. This is our fucking town. I, he could have disrespected me almost anywhere have, else, but not in here. Jack, I can't have that happen. Word cannot go out. That we let people come in here and disrespect us. You fucking understand me. I I understand you completely. I'm just the only objection I have, Tony, is give him back his guns. We should have left that shit on the ground. I uh, respect your judgment, Jack. I really do. But this is a place of business. We don't take the hard-earned stuff from other people. We do business. He got his fucking weapon. He worked hard for that shit. We're not just gonna take that away from him. And that's not the message I want to come across. He made a threat. I understand the threat. I understand it's a big fucking deal. If anything, he's gonna plan something with his fucking guys. Either way, how the fuck do I do business if I kill all my potential clients? Might as well send a message right now. And that's what we did. I appreciate your concern once more, Jack. But this time, I had to take matters into my own hands. Sure thing, boss. It was quite obvious that Jack did not agree, but for good business, you need to take risks. And for better business, we need more people. This is when I met Pablo Hernandez. So, uh, yeah. where are you from, uh, Pablo? Sinaloa. You familiar with the cartel over there? Yes, yeah, I was associated with Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm from, uh, I'm from the New York <laughs> Mafia, hey. We used to do a lot of business with the cartel down there, so, uh... I know you're a man of this kind of business, so I'm gonna make you a proposition here. Something that you may not want to refuse. I swear this family's grown bigger than what I used to have back home. Later that day, we had another visitor. Her name was Alyssa Morgan. Came to present herself, and maybe ask for some of our services. It's a nice little place you've got here. Yeah, thank you very much. We've been working very hard the past uh, few weeks. <laughs> Hi. You know, I did a class for you guys. Oh gosh, hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Just fine. You ended up getting married, right? I thought I had heard that maybe over the radio. I'm sure you heard there was uh, quite a bit of heat. There were people being tortured who knew me, and uh, I went north for a while and left things in Gerhard's hands. Uh, the campus has been maintained. Uh, we've been maintaining visitors. We've been trying to help out uh, and support Dr. Kenji. Uh, we're planning on a spring semester, so... It's really good. Uh, trying to preserve the history, I suppose, eh? Some of the things that we uh, end up teaching and learning have, have to do with the hardcore survival and, and dealing with uh, some of the harshnesses of reality, but we do also try to maintain, well, political science and uh, uh, criminology, history, and that sort of thing. We've had some amazing guest professors in the past, as you know already. We're always looking for whatever the people of Trenaris feel is relevant, whatever they feel like that they would like to share and are capable of teaching. I think um, anything that brings us closer together, uh, building something that we love and care about, uh, has a better chance of succeeding than punishment and violence and, and any of that sort of thing. And fortunately, because of that, we often find ourselves at the end of pokier sticks than ours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I uh, understand, you know, we are a mafia, you're not an idiot, I'm pretty sure you look like a pretty strong and intelligent woman. Heck, you're still fucking alive after all this time, and, you know, to me, in my book, that means, uh... Tony! Yeah? Uh, there was a man out in the woods, he was sitting out there watching us. We, were, we ran up to him and looking out through the binoculars, he had a police hat on like a regulator. Tried to get close to him, but he ran. Thank you, Pablo. And hey, next time... Don't fucking interrupt me while I'm talking to a guest. Now go and fucking deal with it. Sorry about that. It's okay, they just wanna be, uh... They wanna, they wanna make sure you're up to date is all. 
Looks like you've got a good crew. Stupid sometimes, but very good men. Uh, Alyssa, you seem like a woman of resource. I have a question for you. I've been looking for somebody, and perhaps you might have heard of this person, maybe seen him. I don't know. His name is Bobby Moretti. Does that ring a bell to you? Gosh, I'm afraid it doesn't. I'm sorry. If you do see him, please just uh, get in contact with me, eh? It's my brother. So just let him know that uh, I'm looking for him. Yeah, anyways, uh, Miss uh, Morgan, uh, what brought you uh, by a town today? I was just hoping to get to know you guys and also to formally let you know that you're welcome at uh, the campus at Delina anytime. There may actually be uh, some business in it for you because honestly we may have to hire some security if we get some larger events going now. Oh good, good, yeah, you came to the right place, that's for sure. Well, thank you. Thank you, man. Really appreciate your help. Without you, we couldn't have done it. Really, no, not an issue. I try to keep that. Not right here. I need you to know that. Did it do it alone? I always repay my debts. Don't worry yeah, about that. You know, I fucking owe you. Okay. Shit, son of a bitch! Oh, fuck! Mike! You okay? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Oh shit! Son of a bitch! We fight for the good people! You don't understand! You betrayed us! What's the difference between you and them? Huh? They hate! Huh? You murder! Not much! For the Go to hell! We cannot let a member of our group just die and not have payment for what? What is happening? I will back you. Well, not only that, we gave them, we gave them guns. We expected them to help us protect themselves from these guards because we knew that they would be back, but they weren't going to run off and never come back. It's their island. And it was five moments when they pretty much left everyone. They never died, and I couldn't get there in time. The prince just left. I haven't heard from them since. I will back you 100% on what is going to happen. The guys that helped us break out of Estellus, Alex Volkov and his men from Lovek, were on the way to Pusta to meet me. I called them in to repay for a favor long overdue. But Alex did not seem very excited. Uh, hello friends, and um, welcome to uh, our home. Alex. Yeah, Tony. It's very, very good to see you. <laughs> Spoke. I see the look of disappointment uh, in your face. Alex, you must understand. It was not easy for us to get back on your feet such as yourself, you know? You people have been out there for a long time. And I understand you might have a little frustration. I did wait a little while before communicating with you, but I'm not a man who appreciates wasting anybody's time. There's no reason for me to waste yours with some stupid promises and false dates. I am here today with you because we are ready. We're ready to repay this immense favor you have brought to us. This gift of freedom, all thanks to you and your men. We are forever in your debt. Well, it's not exactly uh, the lateness of the payment that bothers me. It's the most circumstances of what happened. And see, you had one of my guys die and you ran off. You all had guns, I gave them to you. You ran off and let one of my guys die. And see, I don't like that. We were shaken up too. Everybody was dropping like flies. Not only a man that was taken away that night, but one of our good men was also taken away. We didn't know where these shots were coming from, how many there were. It was fucking crazy out there, Alex. It's fucking nuts. There was no way for us to fight something we didn't know. We couldn't do shit. You think I don't fucking kick myself in the ass every day because of the shit? You gotta understand. We lost this good man, this friend, this brother to us now. That he helped us just like you. I don't know what I can do to repay this debt. It probably will never be repaid fully. You lost the life of a friend, a brother probably, somebody you cared about, and there's nothing I can do to ever bring him back. And that's why I offer you our services, free of charge, anytime, anything you need. Very generous of you. Like I said, yeah, I'll never be able to give you back your, your friend, eh? I can't do that, but I can promise you to give you as much help as I can, just as he would have done for you. Will be that loss. I hope that'll be big enough for you to accept. Deal. Excellent. 
Well, this is marvelous. I am a man of my word, and that's what I delivered. And later that day, Tucker wanted to introduce me to an old friend of his. A real fucking Italian. That's been the quiet. It's just a uh, guest. Uh... Yes, yes. This is my good friend Enzo. He was... Enzo. Uh, a citizen of my town. Jesus Christ. Uh, an Italian. Si. Eh, testa de cazzo, it's nice to see, eh? I'm sorry, it's just, I haven't heard an Italian accent so long. It just feels so fucking good. I, uh, you know, join, join me, Enzo, join me. I'd like to get to know you. What the fuck brings a guy like you all the way here? In this fucking place. Um, the Pogo business, uh, I come here for a little bit of a uh, business. He told he was here for a business trip as well. Hey, seems fuck like, uh, it. <laughs> yeah, but I got fucking, uh, you know, backstabbed in the whole fucking deal and uh, really landed me in some hot fucking water, but, uh, but I'm here now. If uh, fucking make you feel any better, I'm still fucking stuck here, eh? You're not alone, eh? <laughs> We're all stuck here. I really like this Enzo guy. Made me feel like I was back home. And apparently, this guy can make some vino. Still all uh, Tucker here, uh, at least the one uh, bottle of wine. <laughs> I used to make a apple of wine, eh? Oh, Jesus Christ, some wine, really? I haven't seen wine in... I, I don't know how long. It's... Uh, the Pogo is sweeter than uh, normal, but uh, it still does a good trick. Yeah, I'll try to get it set up for you, man, because I want some wine. While I was trying to entertain our guests, something happened at the shooting range. I ended up getting Alfie's hand cut. So, he pulled me aside to talk to me about it. What's the matter, Alfie? Uh, I'm not sure if you overheard what happened or not, um, but uh, there was a little, uh, well, maybe issue. Uh, you see my hand, uh... Yeah, yeah I was gonna right ask here. about that. What the fuck's up with the hand thing? Well, uh, I'm in the barn, uh, we were just mm, talking, I guess, and uh, there were a few of us, and, and um, the new guy, Pablo, I believe, uh, he was showing Lucifer his knife, and um, what seemed to happen was uh, Lucifer had a little, well, maybe sort of panic attack, I guess you could say. He seemed uh, a little uncontrollable, yes. Moving the knife around, uh, almost hitting uh, the prospect, and so I was able to calm him down. And uh, as I was taking the knife out of his hand, he pushed it into my hand and cut me. How do you feel about this, Alfie? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I guess uh, everyone makes mistakes, uh, but I'd like to keep my family close, yes. Uh, and uh, it's hard to call someone family that um, cuts you. I understand this. I'm very upset. It was time for me to sit down with Lucifer and have a talk. Sit the fuck down. Lucifer. Look at me. What's wrong? You could talk to me. I'm not gonna do anything to you. I know you've been through a rough fucking past, man. I could see the instability in your fucking eyes. And this is a family. You don't attack fucking family. You know that. We are here to help you. Yeah, I know. We are here to no. take care of you, Lucifer. Shut the fuck up. We are here to fucking help you. you can't go around hurting our fucking men. Your brothers. <coughs> now, please explain to me why the fuck did you hurt Alfie? I want to help you, you understand? I'm sorry if I was a little mad here, look. I'm sitting down, I'm fine, look at me, okay? When I get a fucking knife in my hand, I don't know what I'm doing, I can't control it. It's okay. I don't know if- Hey, hey, you've been through shit in life. I understand how difficult that must have been. So you hurt Alfie, because you had a knife in your hand. Don't you think it's a good idea not to try to grab a knife? Yeah. What do you think about attacking oh. people and going crazy when you fucking hold a knife in your hand? This is my fucking parent. He fucking got a smile on my face. He fucking 
This is no way to treat your fucking child, my mother. She brought me up, you know, feeding my fucking belly, yeah? She did everything she could. You didn't live this kind of experience, so I could never say that I understand who you are deep down inside. I killed my, killed my fucking bear. I killed my fucking bear. I fucking killed my Shh, I calm my down. I killed the... Shh, hey, hey. The fucking knife. Hey, shh. The fucking knife. Stop it. Right now. You don't need to worry why you so upset. Why are you letting your fucking brain make you feel like this? For a couple of chooches that you called your parents. Simply because she gave birth to you. Simply because he was written on your birth certificate as your fucking father. Why do you let these people in the past decide how you're gonna run the rest of your fucking life? You killed them. So fucking what? You know how many people I killed? I killed so many fucking people it's insane. I have a hard time going to fucking bed at night. It's not easy. Remembering those people looking at you right in your fucking eyes when you take their life away. I understand how that feels. So sure, I didn't have a fucking chooch of a mother like yours. But I took a life like you did. And I'm not fucking go crazy when I hold a gun in my hand because I am strong in my fucking mind. And you can be as strong as this. Tell me you could be like that. Tell me it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You killed those fucking people because they deserved it. Just like everybody else I killed. You understand that, Lucifer? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Just don't do a fucking mess up like that again, okay? Alright. Can I go say sorry to Alfie? Oh, you will go say sorry to Alfie. That's for damn sure. I arranged for Lucifer and Alfie to have a talk, since they share more in common than they think. You killed them, your parents, uh, but, uh, yeah. but that does not matter anymore. You see, because uh, yeah. mm. your parents, they did not treat you with respect. They did not treat you like a uh, son. They treated you like an no. animal, like something they could play yeah. with. Something they could hurt, but here I I will never treat you like a piece of meat. No, you're more than just a piece of meat to these people here. Our respect uh -huh. is important. Yeah. Lucas, look at me. Look at me. And when you get that feeling inside, the feeling even I get sometimes, you have to make it stop. Take me in as a. Someone that cares about you, someone that respects you, and I will treat you as family. You, you changed. You changed into someone else. And, uh, that person isn't you. It's not who you need to be. It's not who you want to be. Because, uh, you're just like me. You understand? Yeah. Like I said, I have a hard time sleeping sometimes. So I decided to check in on his shop. Hey, Tony. Hey, Jack. How's business? Slow still, eh? Yeah, it's slow. Yeah. Hey, good time, my friend. Hey, good time, eh? You know, there's gonna be a day where we're gonna be like, uh, when's this business even gonna fucking end? <laughs> For now, oh, shit. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? That would be Carl. Hello, Mr. Carl. How are you? Hey there. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing fine. Yeah, yeah, you look fine. Uh, so, uh, why is he sitting here? Needed a place to rest. Yeah, well, there's, a. Uh, yeah, there's, there's light over here, so. Come with me, Mr. Carl. It is okay. Looks comfortable, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, I suppose. Mr. Carl, you got a last name. Carl Burnside. Carl Burnside, okay. You came to the right place, mm. Mr. Burnside. Yeah. You came to the right fucking place. Eh, we're a place of uh, business, though. Uh, but we like to take care of people such as yourself, you know? You just uh, pass on by the town like this, fine. You can have a place to stay for the night, for the week, whatever. You know, we're good people, we'll take care of you. Do you, uh... Okay. Do you have any friends, Carl? Uh, 
Well, I used to. Used to? Well, what does that mean? Rather unfortunate events. Uh, there, most of them aren't with us anymore. I decided to listen to his story since I couldn't sleep. Anyways, told me about his friends Danny and J T. Taylor, some guy called Eddie Beck and Quinn Bauer, people he presumes is dead. His old family. I guess not everybody can be as lucky as me, but at least I was able to finally go to sleep after this. Focus here. <gasps> 